Many of you will know that we have an electric car here in France. It happens to be a Zoe and we love it. But something strange. I've noticed that electricity pricing here in France is completely different to electricity pricing in the UK. What makes France uniquely cheap but strange? There's no low cost tariff. So I've decided to try and get to the bottom of the mystery of how France actually produces electricity. And it has a Cold War element, a mystery about mutually assured destruction. France is unique in how it makes and markets electricity in Europe. Join me on some personal research that I think you will also find fascinating. Welcome to the cave. So this started as a just a personal quest. Many countries offer EV drivers competitive off-peak rates to encourage people to charge their cars overnight or at times of reduced national demand. In the UK, overnight pricing can actually be negative and you can actually be paid to absorb the wind energy, which the UK is changing to. So it made sense for me living here in France to look for an off-peak rate to charge the car and to help protect France from the overload of peaks and to use its green energy. Hang on. Here in France, you buy electricity from EDF, which is a um, Electricité de France. It's a government-owned generator. And basically, there aren't any off-peak rates. The rate for charging a car when everybody turns on whatever the French equivalent is of their kettle. I don't think they really drink tea. But there isn't one. It's the same price for electricity at, say, 6 o'clock in the evening as 3 a.m. in the morning. Why? <laughs> I just wanted to answer that question. And that led me down a rabbit hole to discover how France is unique in the world in making electricity. And it all started way back in time. France, a proud and unique nation with some of the best scientists in the world. We all remember Marie Curie. Well, in fact, France really was at the forefront of looking at the effects of radioactivity. It's actually a French word. And also France stands alone in the world. It felt very, very let down in World War II that France was so easily invaded. And its biggest fear was that Britain, NATO, and the United States wouldn't step in to protect France if it was ever invaded, say, by the expansionist communist powers of the 1960s. So France decided it needed its own way of deterrent. But before we get to that, and that's a fantastic story, let's go back and look at the Manhattan Project, one of my favourite subjects, where you had British, Canadian, American, Israeli and a few French people building the bomb. At the end of the war and a successful explosion and an early end to the conflict in Japan, the scientists all went back to their home countries. Many of the scientists were from Israel and they started their own research and nothing happened in France. So France was feeling a bit out of the picture, so they did a deal with Israel. So Israel and the French scientists decided to build France an atomic bomb. So this raises an interesting issue 
for a U. What I'm doing here is finding information about France and its history. Well, if you live in the United States or China or Australia, type in a French question about the history of French nuclear power and you'll probably draw a blank. The so-called World Wide Web is not. It's a country wide web. It's filtered. It's actually filtered by Google because they're trying to target products and advertisers in your area. But there's a way around this regional filtering of the so-called World Wide Web. You need to get your own VPN, virtual private network, which unlocks the web of the world. And it's the only way I can actually work. If I'm researching an American story, I tell NordVPN that I'm in the United States. If I'm doing a British story and want to know pounds, shillings and pence, I say I'm in London and I just return home. I live in France for a French story. The world is my oyster. I wouldn't be sharing this with you if it didn't really work. And it does. NordVPN sponsored my channel and you need a VPN. Check out the link below. Get the discount that they're happy to pass on if you do it through code Professor Simon and enjoy surfing the whole World Wide Web. So that leads us back to the story and a really good question. Why? <laughs> Why does France need an atomic bomb? They had a very different idea to defense to Britain and America. At the time of the Cold War, when both the Soviets and the Americans were building a stockpile of enormous destructive power, which led to an interesting concept of mutual assured destruction, which actually, <laughs> which actually is probably the safest part of the Cold War history because there was a balance. The terrible, destructive wrath of any nation that fires weapons to the other, they knew they would be obliterated. So nobody pressed the button. By now, France using the Israeli Manhattan Project scientists and their own genius scientists built their first bomb, which they exploded in Algeria, a French colony at the time. But by 1962, they'd lost Algeria and moved their weapons testing program to French Polynesia in the Pacific. But hang on, to make a bomb, you need processing facilities. You need a reactor and it's often sold as a power station and it's not. It's producing plutonium for bombs. And that's exactly what France did. But France did something really strange with their bombs. They didn't really have enough nuclear weapons to be part of mutually assured destruction. They weren't scary enough. They liked the concept. And Charles de Gaulle said, you know, if you kill 80,000 Frenchmen, we'll kill 800,000 Ruskies in a classic, quite provocative statement. But he also said this. He said France is also going to have tactical nuclear missiles and tactical nuclear weapons are the most dangerous. They're the ones that you can practically use rather than just be mutual destruction. You're actually going to use them as a big bomb. And France built these, these missiles that could be fired onto Germany if the Soviet Union tanks ever started coming towards Western Europe to invade France because France didn't trust Britain or America would help. They were especially let down after the Suez Crisis of the 1950s where the French controlled Suez Canal wasn't protected by Britain and they just felt let down. So they wanted their own atom bombs. So France built a trident of nuclear power, land, sea and air, drop nuclear missiles to protect France only. Up to 1996, they exploded the tests in French Polynesia. These tests were secret and brilliantly covered and leaked 
by a friend of mine who is a wonderful journalist and filmmaker, David Carr Brown, who exposed the French secrets of the atom bombs of Polynesia. Well done, David. So while all these bombs were being built and tactical missiles on trucks in France were being built, they also decided, due to the Middle East oil restrictions of the early 70s, to build nuclear power stations to produce electricity in France. France now has over 50 nuclear power stations, more than any other country in the world. And they work in a unique way. Let's talk about electricity production. What you want if you're making electricity is a stable base load. And then when there's peaks, little power stations like hydro pump stations or natural gas or even oil or coal that you can bring online quickly to take out those peaks and keep the frequency the same. France doesn't need that. France produces terawatts of power day and night. Hence, they don't have off-peak electricity rates. They don't need to offer it. France produces more electricity than the whole of France could possibly consume if everybody plugged all their toasters, kettles and electric cars in at once. And they've even got electricity to spare. They sell electricity all over Europe. There's an enormous cable going through the northbound Channel Tunnel to a substation in Kent, which just caught fire cutting off half of Britain's electricity gigawatts that it buys from France. Uh, sorry, Britain, and we won't mention Jersey, where there's a dispute with fishing and all the electricity comes from a cable from France. It's going to be a disaster for Jersey if France cuts it off. So that's why in our house here in France, the electricity costs the same in the early evening as it does in the middle of the night. It's about 14 cents per kilowatt, which is one of the cheapest electricity prices in the whole of Europe. And it doesn't vary. So thanks to Madame Curie, thanks to Charles de Gaulle, who wanted to be independent, we have really cheap electricity, over 70% of France's electricity is made in their nuclear power stations. There are problems. They've had a couple of accidents. A few of the power stations are in now reassigned seismic zones, which makes them potentially dangerous. And Macron, President Macron, has decreed to reduce the production of nuclear power in France to 50%, and the rest will be alternative energy. But it's amazing here in France. Almost nobody has solar. Almost nobody has a wind turbine. You drive around, there aren't the windmills, there aren't the solar farms that you get in other countries because France doesn't need them. France is a fantastic country. It does its own thing. It's a proud nation. It's a nation of engineers and scientists. They're really at the forefront. Today, France is building this. ITER, a fusion reactor in the south of France. Wow, harnessing the power of the fusion of atoms in the sun. I hope that makes charging my electric car even cheaper. So thanks for watching. This is a very personal piece of research that I wanted to do. Why can't you get off-peak tariffs in France for electricity? Because they don't offer them, because it's all nuclear. So now I know, and you know too, because the truth was out there.